Hey guys, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. And a couple days ago here in Minnesota, the Minnesota House patched, passed bills HF8 and HF9. HF8 is the universal gun transfer background check, universal background, universal gun registration. I don't, I don't know what you want to call it. And then HF9 was of course the red flag law. Uh, so basically, uh, HF8, anytime you need to transfer a gun, which means borrow a gun to a friend, sell a gun to a friend, a uh, family member, etc., you have to go to a federal firearms license, uh, FFL, and you have to, of course, do a background check through them. I'm sure there'll be a fee of some sort because the FFL needs to charge for their time, and then you can, can go through the, the sale. Uh, the red flag checks, which are far more egregious, uh, then the the background checks are a law that uh, if someone really anyone as far as I can determine thinks that you are a danger uh, they can go to court get a an injunction uh, a met, injunction is probably not the right legal term but a court order against you without your knowledge and then you'll find out when the police show up at five in the morning to seize all of your guns and then you can have a chance to go to court and defend yourself after they've seized your property. It violates like six amendments. So it's a pretty atrocious and terrible law. And of course, the Democrats here in Minnesota were celebrating their victory in passing these laws. And my representatives uh, from my district in Minnesota are Democrats, and so I'm on their email chain because they're my representatives, and, and so I get their emails. You should sign up for your the emails for whoever represents you in the government, whether or not you agree with them. It's just a good idea to get their emails. Excuse me. So I saw this and, and saw this pass and, and watched the debate on the House floor as these laws passed. And it occurred to me, uh, and something that I think I originally heard in The Atlantic, which is no longer a good publication, but was during the Obama years, that uh, the line that kept coming to my head is, our civil liberties keep us safe. Everybody is talking about how these laws are gonna make Minnesota more safer and how they're going to really help Minnesotans be safe and, and they're gonna protect our kids in school and our kids have to do lockdown drills and how that's terrible and on and on and on and I have children who go to school and they do lockdown drills. But you know what keeps my kids safe is their civil liberties, both theirs and mine. That's why we have them, is to keep us safe. I fear a government that is bloated beyond its business far more than I fear uh, crazy people who want to do crazy things. Crazy people who want to do crazy things are part of the reason that I own firearms to begin with. Uh, and that is what's going to keep my kids safe. And that's what's going to keep my family safe. And ultimately, it's gonna, what's going to keep me safe is our civil liberties. So this idea that the best we can do to keep you safe is to restrict your civil liberties is asinine on the face of it. When the very thing that does keep us safe are our civil liberties. If you don't believe me, take a look at the 1960s and uh, Mr. Martin Luther King and all those thousands of people who fought for their civil liberties to keep them safe. Uh, that's why we have them. And they did that at great cost to themselves and put themselves in not safe things so that they could have those civil liberties. Our civil liberties keep us safe. I will say it until I am blue in the face and the idea that you can do anything else or that you can restrict those in order to keep me safe is completely insane. Do brave deeds and endure.